You know, funny thing, I wanted to, I wanted to preach a message on, on uh, that text in, in uh, Luke where it says, Peter followed the Lord afar off. But I couldn't get it together. David, you ever been there? I just couldn't get it together. A lot of people, you know, they, they want to name the name of Christ in faith. But they don't want to get too close to him. Because getting close to him, uh, you're going to have to change your ways. You're going to have to change directions. And they don't want to do that. So they, they follow the Lord afar off. Yeah. I've, I've got some, I've got some, uh, I've, got, I've got a son that's following him afar off. We are grieved over his uh, plight at the moment. Uh, we, we have grandchildren, likewise, who are following afar off. Some of them uh, haven't even gotten saved yet. They're still very young. Uh, we still have a lot of great-grandchildren. I don't know if you know this, but we got, we got uh, uh, 14, is it, grandchildren? 13. And 14 great-grandchildren. And one on the way. One on the way. So, so let, let's take a look in the book of Job here for a moment. And I, and, and I want to preach a, a, a teaching-type message this morning on, uh, on uh, what I call the coping with calamity. Coping with calamity. Uh, I don't know uh, how many of you have a computer uh, or a cell phone, but I get upwards to three to four hundred emails every day, every single day. Most of them are threatening uh, of one kind or another warning me to get my money out of the bank or to do something with my retirement money or to be concerned about uh, uh, what's going on over in Ukraine or, or maybe uh, something that's happening elsewhere around the world. I mean, it was just one, one uh, problem after another. Uh, one warning, one... Uh, 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 thing after another, and, and, and if I took all of that to heart, I'd be a basket case. Yeah. Really, I'd be a basket case. And a lot of people sit at home and fret and worry. And, and, and you know, calamities happen all the time. Uh, there's military calamities such as world wars uh, and wars going on all over the world. Myanmar, Myanmar, the youth uh, that, that used to be called Burma, where Adoniram Judson spent most of his life. Uh, it's it's in civil war. I mean, just crazy. Just people getting killed all the time. Uh, wars going on in Africa, all over Africa. Wars going on, and so, so the you know there's the there's the military uh, uh, calamities, and then of course there's the monetary calamity. Uh, most of you, in fact, all of you, didn't get reared during the Depression. You got. You got born after the depression, but my my three my two brothers and my sister they were born before the depression started. I was born in the middle of the depression, and so uh, we understand a little bit about the 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 depression and and the monetary what happened people used to you know when 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 the depression took place and and the crash of 29 people threw themselves out the windows 
because they lost everything. Everything. And, and let's not forget 208, 28, 20, 2008. Many, many people lost tons and tons. Uh, millions of dollars were lost. Monetary uh, catastrophes and, and calamities. And then, of course, uh, there's always the ministry calamities. I was thinking about this the other day, uh, and uh, I, you know, I've, I've been a student of history, church history mainly, and I remember when I started in the ministry back in 1960, there were five, five major church planting ministries in the country. Five of them, starting in 1920. Uh, and churches were being planted all over America. I mean, it was the most incredible time uh, the, that our country has ever seen because uh, people were being saved by the thousands. Billy Graham was at his height. Uh, in, in 1942, uh, and uh, uh, evangelism was king. But uh, that all came to a major halt. It was a, it was a it was a catastrophe because all five of those missionary or church planting mission programs no longer exist. They don't, they don't even exist anymore. And then, of course, there's, the, there's uh, uh, the, the colleges. Did you know that there's 10 colleges? I counted on my one, my, my two hands. I counted 10 colleges since 1970. 10 colleges have closed their doors, Christian colleges. Training preachers for the ministry. And they're all gone. All of them. And there's just a few left now. Just a few left. And the churches. David, you remember some of the big churches. Uh, Detroit Baptist Temple. They, they seated, and, 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 and I sat in the building. They seated six thousand every Sunday. It doesn't exist anymore. It's gone. Akron Baptist Temple with Dallas Billington. They seated three to five thousand. It's gone. It doesn't exist. Highland Park Baptist Church that housed Tennessee Temple. It's gone. And, and what happened to them happened to dozens and dozens of others, big, big churches. Pontiac, Michigan had a monstrous church uh, uh, with, uh, uh, with its pastor. I can't think of his name, but, 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 but they're all gone. One, one calamity after another. But calamities happen all the time. And we've got to be able to respond to them. Uh, calamities happen in our lives. Jonathan was telling me that his uncle passed away. And he was probably up in years. And, and, and the death of a, an older gentleman or a lady it isn't really considered a catastrophe or a calamity, but the calamities exist with young children. Uh, I remember some years ago in Tipton, a family was going down Highway 31. They were on vacation. He was driving a brand new uh, Mercedes Benz. There was a husband, a wife, and three children. They were on their way to Florida. Truck, a truck came across the Midian, hit them, killed all five of them. 
incredible calamity. But, 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 that, but, but calamities happen all the time. And sometimes uh, they happen so often that, that we become calloused, calloused to them. Uh, uh, without question, the greatest calamity that has ever taken place in the history of the world was the death of Jesus Christ. We often think about who was responsible for that. We'd like to blame the Roman soldiers. And they, they had part of it. We'd like to blame the Jewish leadership. They too had a little part. But we fail to realize what, what is said in, in, in Isaiah 53. See, the calamity that happened to Jesus was within the will of God. And that's the hardest thing we can figure. You know, when calamity takes place, uh, we, we never figure out that, that that was probably within the will of God, particularly as it relates to our lives. But you see, in Isaiah 53, you know what it says? It says it pleased the Lord to bruise him. Jesus was slain before the foundation of the world by God. You see, you see God poured all of his wrath and his judgment upon Jesus because he took all of our sins upon him and God judges sin. And it was found in his son. Not because of his own sin, but ours. Ours. When we look at Job... Now, uh, my text really is about all four chapters, but we're not going to read. We're not going to read all four chapters. But I do want to read some isolated verses. For instance, in verse one of of chapter one, we see his character. There was a man in the in the land of Uz whose name was Job, and that man was perfect and upright and one that feared God and eschewed evil. That was his character. And then in verses uh, uh, 2, 3, and 4, we see his, his circumstances. It says there, and, and there were born unto him seven sons and three daughters. His substance also was 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 yoke of oxen, 500 she-asses, and a very great household, so that, that this man was the greatest of all the men of the east, and his sons went and feasted at, in their houses every, every one his day, and sent and called for their three sisters to eat and, and to drink with them. That's, that's, that, that's, that, that was the circumstance. And then we see his concern concern for his children. I wonder how many of us, how many of us have a concern for our children? Look at look what it says here. And it was so when the days of their feasting were gone about that Job sent and sanctified them and rose up early in the morning and offered burnt offerings according to the number of them all. For Job said, it may be, it may be that my sons have sinned, cursed God in their hearts. And thus did Job continually. That is, he continually was concerned. Well, how many of us have children that have sinned and cursed God in their hearts? Yeah. 
However, beginning in verse 6, going through verse 11, I'm not going to read that, but it's a conversation, a conversation between God and the devil. The angels of the Lord gathered together around God, and uh, Satan likewise appeared in his presence, uh, and, uh, and God spoke to Satan. And uh, he spoke to him about Job, how that Job, uh, he thought, believed God because, and, and, oh, and, and, and was faithful to God because God took good care of him. He said, you, you allow me to work with him, we'll find out if he's really faithful to you. But by the way, the devil, the devil is not omniscient. Did you know that? He may be ubiquitous. He may be everywhere through his demons. But he's not, he's not omniscient. He doesn't know everything. He thought he knew something about Job, but he was wrong. But God, listen, li listen to what it says in verse 12. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he hath is in thy power. Only upon himself put not forth thine hand. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. And then, beginning in verse 13, calamity begins. And, and that calamity goes all the way through verse 19 about uh, all, of his, all of his animals, uh, his sheep, his camels, his oxen, uh, his, all of his servants, they're all taken uh, by one stroke of, of uh, Satan's power. We forget, we forget that, that, that Satan is the second most powerful entity in all the universe, second only to God. And, and uh, Satan, Satan did all of this. Uh, and then, and then uh, uh, it, it says, in beginning in verse 2, uh, they all appear before God again. That's what it says. Uh, it says, beginning in verse 2, chapter 2, it says again, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them to present himself before the Lord. And then the Lord spoke to the devil again. And Satan said to God, you know, you won that round. <laughs> you won that round. But what about, what, what about if I touch his body? He said, and God gave him consent to touch his body, but he couldn't kill him. And so he, he, he just filled him with boils from the top of his head to the sole of his feet. Calamity. Just one calamity after another. And then, of course, uh, Job's three friends came, and they thought they, they thought they had it all figured out, you know? By the way, let me suggest something to you. When calamities happen, don't try to interpret them. I, I, I get amused at these TV evangelists. And sometimes they're pastors of big churches. When something tragic happens, like, like what took place with the towers coming down, or, or some terrible thing like floods just in, in inundating the, the New Orleans. You know, you know, evangelists have a way of, you know, they think they're smarter than everybody else, and so they, they interpret them, and then they get themselves in trouble, and they have to come 
begging forgiveness and have to put. Don't, don't try to interpret the calamities in life. And the calamities will help, you know, will happen to you and to me. But it's, I, I just caution you, don't try to interpret them. Don't, don't give them some, some meaning. Yeah, let me suggest something to you as to where, uh, and, and uh, some explanation for calamities. First of all, I, and I hesitate to say this, I hesitate to use this word, but I don't know any other word. Mere chance. See, not everything is predestinated. Guy fell down the steps, you know, broke his leg. He said, well, thank God that's over. <laughs> yeah. Now, you see, uh, uh, be cautious about those kind of things. Because, you know, things happen. Uh, it, it's part of the mysteries of life. Things happen. And, 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 you know, if you try to explain it, you, you just get into more trouble. That's all. And so, uh, mere chance. And then, and then there's the outworking of nature. Uh, we sometimes forget about that. Uh, with, you know, uh, floods come, hurricanes take place, tornadoes take place, uh, earthquakes take place, and, uh, and uh, uh, other, other catastrophes and calamities take place simply by the outworking of nature. I mean, we don't hear the rumbling under the earth, but there's rumbling under the earth all the time. And some place where it's a little weaker than others, it may be an earthquake takes place, like over in Turkey not too long ago. Uh, but, you know... There's, there's the outworking of nature. And then let's not forget the devil. The devil is still working today. He's still very much alive and, and he's busy today. And some things that happen, he gets consent from God to do. I, 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 I don't know about the, the spiritual uh, relationship that that family had that was killed and wiped out all at once. I don't know what the relationship was with God. But, you know, uh, sometimes things happen because the devil is behind it. But don't, don't try to interpret that. We get into trouble. Oh, the devil did it. We don't know if the devil did it or not. But he's active, and he can do those things. He has the power to do it, but it's consensual power. It's because God gives him consent to do it. He's not omnipotent. He's not omniscient. He, he's, he, he himself is not even omnipresent. But he is ubiquitous in that he has demons that work out all, all the time. So, so uh, and then of course, let's not forget divine judgment. Divine judgment. Remember what happened to Sodom and Gomorrah? God did that. Remember what happened to Jesus? God did that. Divine judgment. When Jesus died, God uh, had his own son put to death because he had all of our sins heaped upon him. So, so those are things that, that, that uh, we have to deal with. Uh, we may not like those things, but, but, but those things happen and uh, we don't try to interpret them. We, we try not to give an explanation for them. 
because because uh, there's you know different ways things happen. And then let me just mention four simple facts, facts of life. Uh, uh, first of all, let's uh, let's remember that God is still on the throne. God is sovereign. He's sovereign over the world. He's sovereign over the nations. He's sovereign over the church. He's sovereign over our life. He's still on the throne. He's still in control. Never forget that. And then, and then, uh, that's not only true, but but as we think of uh, of certain things like like uh, death is sure. No one's going to get out of life alive unless the rapture takes place. We're all going to perish, and it just so happens that some die uh, before somebody else. I mean, who would have believed that that my wife and I, in our late 80s now, uh, are still alive and kicking? Not very high, but we're still kicking. <laughs> but death is sure. Uh, what's it say? What's it say? Uh, it's appointed unto man once to die, and after this the judgment. You know, we, we pray for people to stay alive. You know, everybody wants to live a long time, but nobody wants to get old. But that's, that's the way most people die, because, because they just get old and then they die. Why don't we just let them die? Instead of, instead of praying for them, about one thing or another, life gets miserable when you're old age and you get diseased and you have all kinds of problems. But but these these things happen to us. These things happen to us. Uh, not only not only is God sovereign and 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 uh, and this, uh, uh, death is sure. But listen, listen, listen. Uh, Satan Satan is our enemy. Uh, Paul made that clear, didn't he? When he said in Ephesians 6, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual wickedness in high places. That, that's, a, that's an echelon of demons. That's Satan's territory. One of the reasons I believe so strongly in the in the holy spirit power is because it's because when when we start talking to somebody about Jesus we're invading his territory we're invading his realm he's the god of this world He's the spirit that worketh in the children of disobedience. So, uh, Satan is our adversary. And then, of course, sorrow is inevitable. Sorrow is inevitable. Well, Job, Job, you know what it says? Job said, uh, in, in two different places, two different places. Once he, he said, man is born to trouble as the sparks fly upward. And then, and then he said, man that is born of a woman is of a few days and full of trouble. But let's not try and put, a, put an explanation on it. I mean, I mean, let let let's face it. Sorrow is going to happen to every single one of us. 
we're going to find ourselves weeping over something. Our heart's going to be broken over something because sorrow is inevitable. The devil also is our adversary. Uh, uh, I'm reminded of what Peter said. He said, be serious, be, be sober, be sober, be vigilant, for your adversary the devil walketh about seeking him whom he may devour. You know, the devil's getting fat today, David. He's eating up our enthusiasm. He's eating up all of our determination. He's eating up our, our desires. And we're, 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 we're feeding it to him. He's eating them up and getting fat in the process. Those are, those are just facts of life. God is sovereign. Uh, sorrow is inevitable. Satan is our adversary. And death is sure. Those are, those are uh, four unalterable facts. We have to deal with them. So, so how do you respond? How do you respond uh, to the calamities that happen? Well, let's see how let's see how Job responded. Okay, look at verse. Look at verses in chapter one, verses twenty through twenty-two. Then Job arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head and fell down upon the ground and worshipped. And he said this, Naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And, and all this Job sinned not, nor charged God foolishly. And then when, when the boils came, when the boils came, listen to, listen to how he responded there. Uh, verse 9 of chapter 2. Then said his wife unto him, Dost thou still retain thine integrity? Curse God and die. And Job said, Thou speakest as one of the foolish women speaketh. What? Shall we receive good at the hand of God? And shall we not receive evil in all of this? Did not Job sin with his lips? He lost, the devil lost round two also. He lost the first round. He lost the second round. And, and then, then it was over. He had no more ammunition. He had no more guns to fire. He was done. I wonder if that's happened, you know, when calamity happens in our life. I remember a lady in my church up in Tipton. She, she wasn't saved yet, but she was part of a, a ladies' Bible study that I taught. And she, she, she was mad at God because, because he took her husband. He was in his 80s. And she blamed God for his death. But then she got saved. And it made all the difference in the world. See? You know, see, we, we, we speak sometimes as foolish women. And foolish men as well. So how do we respond? How do we respond when, when things like that happen? Well, let me suggest some of the things that I've seen. Sometimes we respond by blaming God. We blame God. And our hearts turn against him. I've seen it over and over and over again. They blame God. But, but uh, 
you know, you know, uh, 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 when, 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 when calamities happen, may I suggest a couple of things? Don't panic. Don't, don't, don't throw in the towel. Don't push the panic button. God may be doing something that, that is within your best interest. God may be allowing something to happen uh, so that you can prove uh, to the world that, that you really do belong to God. See? And then, not, not only don't push the panic button, but, but get thoroughly right with God. Thoroughly right with God. Uh, you know, First John 1, 9 talks about confession. Huh? But there's another principle along with that, and that's repent. Confession is, is owning up to our sin. That's what confession is, owning up to our sin. Repentance is turning away from the sin and going a different direction. It's an about face. That's what, that's what repentance is. You know, it's, it, it's foolish. It's foolish to confess sin and then continue on in it. That's foolish. God says, I, 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 you know, I don't, I don't trust that at all. So, so confession, get right, get thoroughly right with God. By confession... And repentance, and then, and then, and then, uh, uh, accept, accept what has happened as a will of God for your life, and that's 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 what's hard. Accept what what's happened as God's will for your life. Ah. Uh, what other explanation is there, see? So you don't know. I mean, that's the, that's, pro that's the big problem. You don't know. So you accept it as, as f from the hand of God, as, as God's will for your life. And then, and then finally, cling. Cling to the promises of God. Ah. Uh, Turn over to Mark chapter 7 for a moment. Chapter 7 of the book of Mark. I want us to read that. I want us to read that out loud. Mark chapter 7 and verse 37. Notice what it says. You got it? 7. 37. You ready? Everybody got it? Let's read it together. And were beyond measure as astonished, saying, He hath done all things well. He maketh both the deal to hear and the dumb to speak. God doeth all things well. What about Job? What about Job? Turn back to Job uh, 25, 25, chapter 25. Remember, remember Job, uh, because of his faithfulness to God, because of his faithfulness, uh, Job got back double everything that he lost with the exception of children. He already had 10 in heaven. And now he's got 10 more. And he's got double all of his animals. Why? Well, because, because God saw that he was faithful. And God honored him and rewarded him accordingly. But look how, look how uh, Job 19, 19, verses 25 and 26, it says, For I know that my Redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. And though after my skin worms destroy this body, yet 
in my flesh, I shall see God. Think about it. That's, that's how we respond. That's how we respond. Remember, God is on the throne. And, and I would caution them, never try to understand all the calamities that happen because we're not omniscient. We're not omnipotent. We don't know. We just have to trust God. So let's pray together. Father, thank you for these few moments together. We pray that as we have taught this morning that um, we'll leave here today with the understanding that calamities happen. They happen to good people. Uh, and, 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 and regardless of, of what takes, takes place, uh, you're still on the throne. You're still omnipotent. You're still all-powerful. You're still all good. And we thank you for that. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well,